So right now I'm wiring up the contactor to the controller, positively, and the contactor positively to the reversing solenoid to give it power. I really don't plan on finishing this today, so I'm just starting it right now, little bits at a time. So I did determine that the top of this, these terminals on the top are the ones, well, terminal on the top here and the terminal on the, the right here are for power in from power source. And terminals on the left and the right in the back of this unit are to the battery. So I did have it backwards when I first described this. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my positive lead to this positive terminal. Might rotate that to make it a better fit. All right, let's see. it out this way so as to keep it far away from that negative. It doesn't really matter. I mean it is grounded, but it shouldn't matter anyway. Okay. Make sure I'm actually filming what I think I'm filming. Tighten this lead. Make it around a little bit. Turn it around there. Now it's super tight, not coming off. Going to do the same thing, but probably not nearly as tight. This side of the solenoid or the contact, I could call it a solenoid, but they're very similar. Now I've had one of these in the past and I have stripped it. So you gotta be careful because they use this weird, I think it's copper, that the actual screw that you're tightening the nut on is some sort of metal, very, very soft metal. So you can't make it nearly as tight as you want to without ripping it. Like that's, that might be just perfect. You don't want it any more than that. And you can still turn this by hand if you wanted to, which is kind of scary. All right, this is my resistor. It's going to go from the positive input from the battery or the power source and go to the outside of the output side of this contactor. Now, I'm going to do a cheat here because I don't want to jump across this that will get in the way of my connections up here. I'm just going to put it on the wire leading off of that that's leading to my, uh, what do you call it here, my, my reversing solenoid. That way I don't have to have this hanging across. Same effect. I mean, the distance between that is negligible. You're not going to notice anything different. Everything's traveling at light speed anyway. It's not pretty looking, but at least it's out of the way. Maybe we can do that. Yeah, that works. Now we're going to tighten it back down, make sure that this reversing solenoid is where it's supposed to be. Alright, that's tight. I'm not going to bother to tighten the opposite side of this yet because I have yet to make the, uh, the bus bar. Let me pull that straight. There we go. So I haven't made the bus bar connect between the switch and this contact yet. But in general, that is how you wire a contactor. You put your diode here, it has a positive side on the side that the input's coming from and the negative on the side that it's coming out of. And you wire negative straight to your negative jumper on the controller. 
and you write a positive in line with a key switch. And that tells the controller that, hey, I've got power, and hey, the person wants to go. Um, also, I hate my sound of my voice <laughs> on these videos. You ever listen to yourself and go, that's what I sound like, huh? Well, that sucks. Um, let's see. I don't really feel like taking all these wires that I've already pulled out of here and reusing them. But I feel like in certain instances it makes more sense to do so. Like, I've already got some connectors on the end of these things. Like this one. It's exactly what I need. So I might make an excuse for this one and say I'm going to use it. Uh, I'm going to look at this later and say why did you do that. Right, so that's my negative. So what you do is you pull off, well, this is still loose, but it's not hand loose. Put the right size. Nope. No luck with that. Just the one. One more. I think it's eight mils. Yep, eight mils. I'm going to file one down, loosen this guy. I guess I don't have to pull them all the way off. It is a prong, not a sphere. See, this is why I don't like it, because this wire is so long. I'm going to come back here later and want to redo this part. I want less mess in here. More understanding of what's actually happening when I look at this mess. would be great. See, I did this months ago. I just built this whole thing came back to it and I didn't know what anything did when it went when something broke on it. See, so I want that to be a quick jumper and not have this massive strange thing going on. It also leaves more room for error here. This can cut something and break. But I guess that'll be a tonight project when I go back and do this again. <laughs> So yeah, so that's all wired up for now. Until I cut a bus bar out, that's it. It looks the same, nothing's really changed. Other than I added a negative lead, I connected up my wiring between all the three of these units here. I still need to add ground. I flipped the battery around so the leads are on the inside towards the battery now. So here and back there. Uh, I think this is now negative, which is fantastic. It's much closer to my source, considering I have much longer uh, positive cables for everything. I mean, what was that? that's like three feet long. That thing's long. So that gives me plenty of length for the positive. And for leads coming in from the battery, I'm using zero gauge. Anything inside the box is two gauge. I don't really know that it matters, but... I'm thinking for these short jumps, it's not terrible. But for the longer spans, I figure the thicker the better. Anyway, that's it.